Hello and welcome everyone to today's video. We would like to explore uh, you uh, Professor Johan Wicklund's thoughts and motivations underlying his recently published article in Small Business Economics. And this article has a very interesting title. Let me share it with you. The title is Business Failure and Institutions in Entrepreneurship, a Systematic Review and Research Agenda. So uh, let me welcome Professor Wicklund. Hello, Professor Wicklund. And hello. introduce, hello, and introduce him to you. Uh, Professor Johannes Wicklund is uh, the Alberg Chair and Professor of Entrepreneurship at Whitman School of Management, Sarkozy University in USA. His research interests include neurodiversity and mental well being in entrepreneurship. He is considered a leading authority in entrepreneurship research with over 100 articles appearing in leading uh, journals. Um, entrepreneurship and management journals and over 35,000 citations to his research. He is editor-in-chief for Entrepreneurship Theory and Practice, a premier entrepreneurship journal. Professor Wickland is a prolific advisor of PhD students. His, he received the Academy of Management Entrepreneurship Division Mentor Award in 2011. Hello. Hi there. How are you today? I'm doing very well, thank you. So, and we also have Professor David Aldrich with us. And let me start with the first question. What is your article exactly about? Okay, yeah. Thank you very much for that. And thank you for doing this interview. It's always interesting to talk about your research. So, so I'll give you a little bit of, of the background. So I think that it's all now probably about 10 years ago, maybe even more, time flies when you get older. Uh, that I started uh, getting interested in, in this area of uh, failure in entrepreneurship. You know, they were so obsessed with, with success in, in entrepreneurship, both as scholars and uh, as, as teachers. But at the same time, we know that it seems that many entrepreneurs don't do that great and they, their businesses actually fail. And many of those that eventually succeed have failed in the past. So. A few people, Dean Shepard, among others, and myself started saying, let's see, let's look at the flip side of the coin and see uh, about failure, what happens to people after they fail and so forth. So I started doing that research, you know, uh, it's now probably, yeah, close 15 years ago or so. And I, um, I started doing research then back in Sweden. I interviewed failed entrepreneurs. I spoke to those that help people who go bankrupt and so forth. And in that process, it turned out that Sweden had an institutional framework that punished failure. And the biggest thing was that the entry barriers to enter into entrepreneurship in Sweden were extremely high. To start an incorporated company to get, you know, limit your personal liability, you needed equivalent of $12,000. You needed to have a, a a, um, an, an, um, an accountant uh, associated with your firm. So it turned out that most people who started businesses actually started um, as sole proprietors, which uh, then had enormous consequences for them if they failed, which meant because they were personally liable for everything in the business. So uh, I wrote about this, I wrote an op-ed about it uh, that got a lot of attention and I started talking to the politicians and I am, can I proudly say that I was involved in changing the legal framework in Sweden, thanks to talking to the Minister of Trade and Industry. So uh, they kind of made it, uh, became more lenient on people that failed and made it easier to start businesses. So uh, I've had a long, long um, history with uh, work in, in, in this area. And then, you know, uh, as you mentioned initially, I enjoy working with PhD students. So this paper is written actually with three former PhD students and, uh, or rather, yeah, it, yeah, three former PhD students. So um, uh, as me, they have become interested in, uh, 
in the topic of, of entrepreneurial failure and then institutions, because as, as we know, uh, you know, the institution or framework of a country has large implications for how, uh, how we, um, how people can, can deal with failure. So in this particular paper, we do a, re a review of the existing literature. And then we kind of, uh, what I think is a little bit creative in the paper is that is the way we sort these papers because we look at, you know, informal institutions, formal institutions and, uh, and governance. So we look at three different uh, aspects of institutional frameworks. And then we also look at uh, the enter stage, the growth state, and the maturity stage. So we kind of sort uh, the existing body of literature into those nine boxes in this three by three matrix. And by doing so, it's pretty easy for us to illuminate where there are areas where there are gaps in our knowledge, areas of research that have not yet been explored. And so we, we highlight those areas and then we finish the paper off by uh, suggesting some research that we think would be valuable going forward. So that, that's very briefly the background of the paper and what this paper is about. Oh, very Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, that's really a, a compelling, coherent, uh, uh, quick synopsis of exactly what the paper does. But I have to say, when you read the paper, it's far more richer and far more nuanced than, you know, uh, uh, than a two minute uh, rendition can, can, uh, can make possible. You know, Johan, I'm one of the few people, uh, colleagues in the business who can say, I've been around longer than you, right? <laughs> Not so many people can claim that, and, but I can. And you know, what strikes me is that, well, failure, you know, his of entrepreneurial failure, that's been around longer, way longer than either of us. And yet it's what's interesting, nobody was focused on failure, entrepreneurial failure at all. As you know, you know, you write this, the, the focus was on success, growth, survival, the rest performance. So my question, I, yes, you just told us why failure is important and a big phenomenon to under, but I want to ask why you, what is it about you that uh, is, 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 is what hit you rather than all of the colleagues I remember from the, you know, an early generation, no, what is it about you that made you, drew you to look at failure? Um, maybe because I'm such a big failure myself. <laughs> <laughs> so many areas of life. <laughs> Uh, I, I think that uh, I think there's always something attractive about doing things that are slightly counterintuitive. You know, I mean, right. One of my area of research now is about the link between uh, neurodiversity, mental disorders, and, and entrepreneurship, and in specific, looking at if there might be some positive connections. So it's a little bit like. You know, if, if you look at the slightly counterintuitive uh, things and we might uh, reveal things that are are a little bit outside of what we ordinarily look for. So I think it's that simple. And as you say, um, uh, you've been around a while. I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm the first one to do this, but, but uh, there was a group of us and I mentioned Dean Shepard and some other people who did early work in this area. Another paper that was very influential to me is this paper by Armour and Cumming, where they look at bankruptcy laws and they can essentially they're saying if bankrupt, bankruptcy laws are really strict, that will reduce the appetite for people to go into entrepreneurship. If they know that if I happen to fail, I'm going to get slammed really bad. That's going to keep people uh, to refrain from actually entering into entrepreneurship. And that was the first paper that actually showed this empirically. And so I think that's, that's, a, that's an important paper. So, uh, and since then we have seen a lot of uh, other papers uh, popping up and more and more people understanding how important this is, because at the end of the day, uh, it has large implications, uh, national uh, implications. So I think it's, um, yeah, it's an important area of research. And there's a few of us who have uh, highlighted this and, and come to understand this is something we need to work on. 
it's very interesting. So I will ask another question regarding this beautiful article. How does your article change thinking in the field of entrepreneurship? <laughs> I think that's for, for others to, to see what actually comes out of it at the end. I think that what, what, what we try to do, I mean, and then uh, we will see how successful we are, is to, to point to, you know, we, we, we carefully go through all the papers we were able to, to locate. And then uh, we try to locate, we try to show that there are areas of research that are, are lacking where we haven't done any work. And the, the, the kind of the biggest part of the paper, except for the re review itself, is something we call re a research agenda. That's the name of, of, of the section of the paper. And here we go into more detail of the kind of research we would like to see people uh, doing moving forward. So I would say, you know, if, if you are a, a, an aspiring entrepreneurship scholar and you're thinking, hmm, this idea of, of failure might be something that interests me. I think this could be a good paper for you to hold, grab onto and to look at the this last part of the paper to see where we identify research gaps. And potentially there's something in there where we say this is an area where we need more work that kind of resonates with what you're interested in. And that way you can find yourself a really promising research question. Like I said, this is what we hope. This is what purpose we hope this paper can serve if that's actually going to happen depends on you know people like yourself young scholars reading this and whether they think it's interesting and important or not Very well i i can't say johan if maha is going to uh to read you know read your uh your 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 future papers or not but i know she's read uh i think she's read more of your past papers than you've actually written it turned out this was essential to her own PhD journey. And that's why she was so interested in, in, in talking with you and probing your, your thoughts. But, but speaking of, uh, well, that's the past, the future. So speaking of the future, where do you see this going uh, in the future? Your, your, your future researcher, where can the, the research go uh, thinking about, about the role of failure? Yeah, that, that's a, a really good question. I, I think that um, I, I think that we, as scholars, we can do quite a bit to um, improve the lives of, of entrepreneurs and other people in the world. So I think that one very important thing is this aspect of learning from failure. We, we often we assume that you, you know you fail and you learn and you come back stronger, but uh, Dean Shepard and others have shown that's not necessarily the case. Rita McGrath also wrote about this. In order to, to, to learn and come back uh, stronger, you need a certain growth mindset, you know, that, uh, that you apply and that you analyze the situation. You know, this is what actually happened. This is what went wrong. This is why it went wrong. This is the things I can do differently. So my hope moving forward is that we can kind of draw out the lessons for entrepreneurs from this and you know kind of tell entrepreneurs when we teach them in the classroom that it's very likely you will we will experience failure whether it's like your whole business is go, goes under or whether it's just that one project fails that differs from person to person but you can't expect to always be successful and then kind of teach them these are, this is how you can approach failure and that way you can learn and come back stronger. So, so I think that's, for me, probably the most important. And I think also on, on the flip side of that, or on the, like to complement that, I think there's also something related to, uh, uh, to the legal frameworks in countries. You know, I think there's, there's greater insight now that things such as bankruptcy laws and, and things like that play an important role for entrepreneurs in terms of you know risking starting a business but i think more can be done there and i hope countries you know not least european countries can have more generous bankruptcy laws and that way foster more entrepreneurship that's actually um touching what david and i trying to do we are trying to help under entrepreneurs 
understand that failure can happen and you have to embrace it. You, you yes. don't have to be afraid of failure. And that's the emotional part that we are trying to address. Like educating entrepreneurs, don't be afraid of failure. Don't avoid it. It will happen. You have to embrace it, learn from it, grow. And another touch point as well with the policy that we are trying to invite uh, policymakers trying to invite the institutes, the, 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 the formal and informal institutions to, um, to educate entrepreneurs on the emotional side and change the culture of cities to become more entrepreneurial and to remove these cultural barriers that are uh, creating or hindering the, the progress, progression of entrepreneurship. My I think that's fantastic. Question. That's a, that's exactly the kind of uh, both research and intervention that, that we need. So I think that's excellent that you're doing that. Oh, yeah, we are we are uh, making use of the of the future work <laughs> that you're suggesting, and this is like you are actually adding also in the paper um, uh, a section to invite um, young researchers and scholars to uh, to build on this area and that's what we what we also wish because a lot of questions are still left there and we, we still hope to have answers especially in different contexts um my last question will be if you have any concluding thoughts or insights that you would like to share with us today <laughs> that's a very open question it allows me to essentially talk about anything uh, anything i like um I, I'll, I would say something specifically to young scholars. Uh, I think it's so important that when we see a paper like this, where you know maybe a, a more experienced, more senior scholar talks about uh, things that might be important to do for the future, I always think it's so important that we uh, see how well that resonates with the things we think are, are important in life meaning that I don't think it, it makes sense to just take a research agenda like ours and say, I'm going to implement this and that in my future research. I think it's so important that we, we see and match that with our own personal interests, because if we are going to do research uh, for the long haul and really stay focused, we got to do things that we are strongly emotionally attached to. You spoke about the emotions before. We need to do things that we as scholars uh, are emotionally attached to. So I would like to see people to maybe get some inspiration from what we talk about here and then see how that matches with their own aspirations, personal aspirations, you know, things that they care about. And that way you can potentially develop research questions that can make you flourish in the future. Great. So yeah, you, you also believe in this intrinsic motivation. If you really have this strong buy-in to a certain topic, you will, deep, you will dive deep and you will create more um, valuable research that can also be usable in the future. I have written a few papers on intrinsic motivation. <laughs> so yes, I certainly <laughs> believe in that. So Professor Aldrich, would you like to add anything? Uh, I would indeed, thank you, Maha. I'd like to uh, thank, uh, thank both of you very much. Uh, Johan, it's always a pleasure to hear. You know, it's funny, I've over the, the course of, um, I don't know, two decades, three decades, maybe. I know when we started, uh, Johan looked quite a bit different than now, right? I mean, uh, 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 and, uh, you know, every time I've spoken with him over the years, he always talks about, he, he may be talking about the same thing, the same ideas, the same paper, but he keeps evolving. He keeps developing. His view on it keeps growing and developing. To me, that's the mark of a, of a deep thinker, a deep, somebody, a, a very serious scholar. So it's a great pleasure to be with a, a very serious scholar and then also a young uh, emerging scholar like you, Ma. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Wicklund and Professor Aldrich. And uh, looking forward to another episode or with another paper. Thank you. Bye-bye.